Good to see you, everyone. My name is Robbie Howell. I'm a tabletop game designer, a history enthusiast, and a lifelong lover of Age of Empires II. I bring all three of these hobbies together in my theory crafting series, where I try my hand at designing civilizations for AoE2 that have not yet been added to the game. But today, we'll be changing it up a little bit. Instead of a civilization or unit, I'd like to discuss a broader topic with you pertaining to AoE2 theory crafting and the game's design philosophy as a whole. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. If you're a veteran, welcome back. I'd love to hear what you think of this new video format. Just trying out some new ideas, throwing shit at the proverbial wall and see what ends up proverbially sticking. If you'd like to see this video's arguments presented in a less frenetic and more organized fashion, a link to my essay on the subject can be found in the description. Also, YouTube, Shmootube, like and subscribe, share the video around. Thanks a bunch, you guys are the best. Then let's begin with some context. A couple months back, I posted my ninth ever theorycrafting video on the Umayyads, an early Islamic dynasty ruled by a powerful Syrian family who made a massive impact on the world stage, conquering a territory that rivaled the Roman Empire at its height. It was a cool build! Open the floodgates and unleash hell! Drown them in waves upon waves of crappy units! And a bit controversial in the old comments section. Infinite free units or I'll bet you're crazy, Robbie. Somebody stop this madman. Don't get me wrong, I fully expected all of these weird and wild and wacky and wondrous elements to elicit strong opinions. I fully and proudly acknowledge that my designs are unorthodox, bordering on the completely impractical at times. And just to be completely honest with you all for a second, my single favorite part about doing this channel is getting feedback from all of you, whether you love my builds or hate them. So thank you for doing so, and please keep it coming. Anyway, what I didn't expect, however, was that the single most controversial element of this build would be its name. As the commenter Donrim points out, AOE2 doesn't do dynasties, kingdoms, or empires, my good man. And he wasn't alone. Quite a few other viewers left comments and sent me messages saying the same. Now, my gut response to these points was to dig my heels in and say, the more the merrier, no matter what. But as these conversations continued, my attitude started to shift, especially after commenter Guru Gru mentioned that my build could just as easily be called the Syrians. Which makes a lot of sense, you know, Syrian family, base of power was in Syria during their reign, Syrian elite troops formed the backbone of their armies, I seriously started to see the merit of the name change. As such, a couple weeks back, I posted that poll on the channel as a follow-up to my first recraft video, asking you all whether I should rename my Umayyads build to the Syrians. And just take a look at this! See it? I hope you do, it's pretty high res. But anyway, though it only got 17 total votes, this unassuming little community poll shows an exact 50-50 split. And this tells me that the conversation is far more interesting than just ethnic yes, dynasty no. So let me take you through some of the arguments for and against both sides, as submitted by commenters and brainstormed by yours truly. Pro-dynastic. One. Just because the game hasn't done dynastic civilizations before does not mean that it shouldn't. Conventions in game design are broken all the time, and AoE2 is no exception. While we occasionally get some stinkers, looking at you, Flemish Revolution, I would argue that more often than not, big new things are well-liked and good for the game. A perfect example would be the Caravanserai and its aura effect. Many claimed before Dynasties of India that an aura would feel too forced and fantastical for AoE2, but from all I have seen and heard, people seem to think that the Caravanserai is A-OK. -okay. Two. Ethnicity is a far less useful metric for civ design than dynasty. Ethnicity is rarely a time-specific descriptor. The Mayans didn't stop being Mayans when they got guns and horses, nor did the Huns stop being Huns when they built houses. And yet civilizations in Age of Empires are given bonuses, tech trees, and unique units that very distinctly place them at a specific point in time, generally at the high point of a famous historical empire. The game could have gone the civilization slash humankind route where everyone has everything, but it very specifically doesn't. So why not eliminate the middleman? Civ designs are very clearly alluding to specific empires and dynasties, rather than some sort of mystical innate ethnic quintessence. Plus, it would help eliminate some of the more egregious historical inaccuracies, like Pictish woad raiders fighting alongside William Wallace or Sassanid cataphracts being backed up by Safavid hand cannons. Three. There is already precedent for dynastic civilizations in AoE2. A trick question for you. Who were the Incas? All right, time's up. 
If you answered an indigenous South American people with a massive empire, you'd be right, pretty much. But what percentage of that empire's population do you think the ethnic Incas actually made up at its height? 4%. The Incas were the rulers of their nation, not the subjects, and by this logic, you could just as easily say that the Habsburgs should be an AOE2 civilization. Okay, how about another one? Who were the Franks? <laughs> All right, uh, enough of that stupid sound effect. Anyways, if you answered either one of many Dark Age tribal peoples inhabiting France, or a member of any one of multiple massive empires that covered most of Western and Central Europe during the early Middle Ages, or any Christian European, according to Muslims during the Crusades, then you'd be right, on all counts. See, the trick was that the question was easy. I sure got you there, didn't I? <laughs> I don't know about you, but only one of the above correct answers was actually ethnic in any sort of coherent manner, to me at least. And that one was only relevant during the very beginning of the AOE2 relevant time frame, almost a thousand years before Joan of Arc shoulder-checked her first crossbow bolt. Whereas the second of those correct answers, the dynastic one, was relevant for much longer during a period that actually much better reflects the bonuses that the Frank civilization in AoE 2 receives. Now, don't get me wrong, this is definitely the most persnickety and, um, actually point of the bunch, but I do still feel that it bears mentioning, since as we will shortly see, many of the counter-arguments to dynastic naming revolve around consistency and tradition. But feel free to disregard this one as quibbling nonetheless. In fact, feel free to disregard any of these arguments as quibbling. In fact, feel free to disregard this entire video. Four, it's not called Age of Ethnicities. Maybe it's just the pedant in me, but saying that empires aren't allowed in a game about building an empire that's called Age of Empires uh, seems real dumb to me. Like going to an ice cream parlor and having them tell you the only thing you can have is milk. Anti-dynastic, Mr. Fantastic. One, conventions should be respected, even when seemingly arbitrary. Riddle me this, why are unique units almost always made from a castle? Why do you almost always start random maps with a town center, three villagers, and a scout? Why do civilizations pretty much always have between three and five bonuses plus a team bonus? Why? No historical reason, I can assure you of that. At some point back in 2000, one of the game's original designers thought that these random choices would work out, and I'd damn well say they did. Are these conventions never allowed to be broken? Of course not. The game does it all the time, but pretty much only ever for a couple of civilizations at a time. Something like dynastic naming would require a fundamental change to pretty much every civilization. An overhaul so substantial that at that point you may as well make a brand new game. And I'm sure we all know how popular that would be. Two. Ethnic designations are more flexible than dynastic. While historical absolutism is my bread and butter, it's certainly far from a universal preference. Most people want the game to be streamlined, accessible, and fun more than they want it to be accurate. Take the Japanese trebuchet, for example. Totally ahistorical. And the bloody thing even has an entire technology solely committed to it. it makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. But even I can agree that it is probably better for the game's balance, as it currently exists, for the Japanese to get the trebuchet. And Kataparuto seems to be pretty well liked as a technology. Necroing trebs is certainly a lot of fun. And it is certainly much easier to accept a historical inaccuracy like this when a civilization is framed from an ethnic perspective. Like I said earlier, pretty much every ethnicity has had access to pretty much every technology at some point in history. Three, ethnic groups tend to be more recognizable and catchy than dynasties. When I first booted up Age of Empires 2 back in 2000, I didn't know a damn thing about history. So who did I choose to play? The Britons! Mandatum? Of course, because even though I was only six, I had at least heard of them before. Now imagine if the game were dynastic. Would little six-year-old Robbie have been hooked by the Mercians, the Angevinians, or the Wessexexexians? How the hell would you even say that? Wessexian. Way less approachable for anyone who doesn't know history. And good luck pronouncing any of those when you're six. Don't get me wrong, half the beauty of Age of Empires is that it introduces you to all these new things you didn't know before. I said it before and I'll say it again, but playing AoE 2 was a huge part of why I love history today, and I'm sure many of you fall into that same camp. But I would never have gotten to the point where the game left such a huge impact on me if it weren't for accessible entry points like the Britons. Or, Ethnic designations help AoE 2 stand out from later installments in the series. Don't get me wrong, AoE 3 and AoE 4, they're both great, I respect them a lot, and in fact, I think they have some really fantastic ideas that have potential to be integrated well into AoE 2. 
However, I certainly don't want to see all of them homogenized, and having AoE2 stand out by having solely ethnic civilizations is one of many ways to keep it unique and distinct from the others in the series. Now, before we finish up, there is one last argument in the anti-dynastic camp that often comes up in these discussions, namely the whole, we don't need more civilizations and age of empires shtick. Do I understand why some people think this? Yes, I do get the idea, but just look at my channel. Adding more civilizations to the game is literally all I try to do. And so, since I so fundamentally disagree with this point, I can't in good conscience include it. No shame if you subscribe to it, of course. But speaking of subscribing, have you remembered to like and subscribe? Alrighty, so at this point we've seen all of the best arguments that have been brought to my attention both for and against dynastic naming in AoE 2. And I hope you find the arguments on both sides compelling. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. What do you think of dynastic versus ethnic naming? Did any of these arguments change your mind or shift your opinion at all? Because I would say that mine actually has. My stance on the pro versus anti-dynastic naming of AOE2 civilizations is, drumroll please, I still think that dynastic names are totally fine. If anything, I substantially prefer them. However, even with all that being said, I still plan from now on for my own civilization designs on this channel to be ethnic, at least for the time being. Why? Well, even though a large part of what I do here on the channel is about breaking conventions and pushing the limits of the game as much as I possibly can, I don't want to throw it out the window all at once. And I think that this topic is far more important than a bunch of haphazard theory-crafted designs can properly do justice to. And also, at the end of the day, I am not against restricting myself in the scope of my designs, even if it is semi-arbitrary. Restrictions improve creativity, while also adding an element of challenge. And challenge, my friends, is fun. But that is just what I think. Now I want to hear your thoughts on the topic. Please do share them all in the comments section down below. And also, what did you think of this style of video? I don't really see myself doing it very often, but if people enjoy it, there are definitely some other topics that I could see giving this sort of in-depth discussion treatment to down the line. And if you want to see an example of the ethnic versus dynastic topic in action in one of my civilization builds, join me next week where I will be tackling a civilization that I considered a grand total of seven different names for, four of which were ethnic and three of which were dynastic. It's a great civilization with a really cool history and I think you'll like the build, so make sure to catch me next Friday for the release. Once again, if you'd prefer to read through my arguments in a more professional and organized manner, check out my full essay linked down in the description below. And as always, my name is Robbie Howell, and ciao for now.